From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at what's now known as Paycor Stadium here in Cincinnati. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. And this will go as a touchback and they will begin things at the 25. They'll start on the ground with Moss. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Oh, they'll try a jet sweep here with Higgins. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Burrow on third down. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. And Marvin Mims deep for Denver. This is brought in at the 21. It's a 45-yard punt, but a decent return there of nine yards. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Nix, he finds his man complete. That's Franklin. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. That is caught. Josh Reynolds. And they get 17 more on that one and another first down. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Back-to-back -back good plays. Have them on the move on first down. Back to throw. Nix. Screen play set up for Williams. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. And when you're throwing the ball downfield really well like they have been on this drive, it's really a nice time to work one of the screen plays in. One of my favorite play callers in the game has always told me he starts every game with 10 to 12 screens because if he starts feeling the pressure from the defense, he uses their aggressiveness against them. They'll run it for the first time with Williams. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Operating from the gun. Nix. This is caught. Touchdown, Broncos. Cortland Sutton. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Broncos get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Those are the drives that prove a lot. You got a rookie quarterback, Charles. You're on the road, takes him down, throws the touchdown pass. And in a game like this, with, as you described, a rookie quarterback, the team usually says, okay, we got to take care of this guy. We got to protect him. But when he goes out and plays like this on the first drive on the road, he doesn't have to say, I'm here to be your leader. They just need to follow him.
After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Bengals drive about to get going. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out with a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them. They're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Burrow now off the bootleg. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he is going to have a Bengals first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. And already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago. So a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there. And they get the first down. On first and ten, Joe Burrow. Now a short one to Gesicki. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll be second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you've got a heck of a tight end candidate. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down up near midfield, spotted at the 48. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Now Burrow on first down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Now a second and ten. Burrow looking to pass. And he's got his tight end. It's Mike Gesicki. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 30. A good pick up there, a 22. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point that continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them... Now Brown, oh, he lost the football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Following the fumble recovery, Nix. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Jermaine Pratt fighting in and dropping him for the loss. Well, that's an excellent way to get the pass rush activated. The first sack of the game for them comes on the first play of the drive, and it makes it very tough for the opponent to pick up a first down now, playing behind the sticks. Looking to throw on second down. Nix. He's got it to Williams. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two. As they've got it with a third down coming up. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. And a big 32-yard play on third. Let's just call it as we just saw it right there, a breakdown defensively. 
Seems like no one went with the tight end, and no one really did. Had all sorts of space in the middle of the field. Yeah, everyone else was covered, but he was not. Big play results. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. They hold him to only two there on the screen. It's second down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. This is second and eight. Again, he'll drop to throw. Finding Williams once more, complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 25-yard line. They give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. And a tackle there by Jermaine Pratt. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Second and 10. Off the play fake, Nix. Touchdown! Cortland Sutton, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Broncos have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Well, only the two catches for him thus far, CD, but both of them have resulted in touchdowns. And I think he's on the bench right now, Brandon, smiling at his position coach and telling him, all those times you talked to us about efficiency, I'm living it right now. Lutz with the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive but at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Not many boos just yet from this home crowd, but they may be starting soon as I'm starting to detect an uneasy murmur through this crowd. This offense, they've been lifeless in this first half. And now here's another punting situation and a fourth down. Now here's Brad Robbins now. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. It has been about as perfect of a start to this game as these guys could have asked for, Charles. They've scored on their first two drives. They still haven't given anything up on the other side of the ball, so they can already make this a three-score game here if they can come away with points on this drive. 
Yeah, they're almost pushing them to the brink, aren't they, partner? Almost to the point now where it's a loss of words for me, which I know would excite all of our viewers, but you're just not supposed to see that type of dominance so quickly in a game like this. Everything they've done has been working so far. Offense, defense, you name it, it's going well for them. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. But he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. So from the 37, here's a second and eight. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Reynolds with a catch out on the right side. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. to throw on second down. Nix, slant pass, he's got Reynolds. And that'll get him to first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. Looking to throw, Nix. Got a man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And all the way home for a Bronco score. Josh Reynolds, 40 yards. And the Broncos have moved out in front by three touchdowns. Lutz to try to add the PAT. And it is now 21 to nothing. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Bengals drive about to get going. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Baron Browning collapses the pocket and drops him for a loss of three. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They are not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. The Burroughs throw caught by Higgins. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Up, 
Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Burrow. Throw left side complete to Chase. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. And I don't think there's any question that this offense is going to need to hit on a few more plays like this. It's been a difficult first half for them, to say the least. And I do believe if they want to get back in this game, they need to start right now. It's kind of like making adjustments. If you try and wait until the half, it's probably too late. They need to get going right here. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Burrow will throw. Now a short one to Gesicki. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. On the left hash mark, this a 38-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. Well, still trailing here, but they do get the late field goal. Now their defense will try to keep this score right where it is heading into the locker room. Yeah, and trailing at the break, you obviously don't want to go in off of a negative play. Give them credit for that one. Finding a way to put points on the board. Give them any type of a spark, anything to build off of as they try and plan a comeback. So just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Broncos with a lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. This fielded right at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember in that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner. Yeah, they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll take this to about the 24, a gain of three. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. They'll see about converting this third and eight. Back to throw. Nix. And that is incomplete. Well, it's too early to figure out what kind of adjustments this defense made at halftime, but that's a good start to the second half. They cannot afford to give up more points and fall further behind, so well done to force the punting situation here. Here's Riley Dixon now. 
And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. Here's Jones. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and ten. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. First down, here's Burrow. Throw left side here, complete to the tight end, Gasicki. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. But whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's the result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands, and oftentimes the receiver turns around. Trying to get it to Chase, but it's intercepted. Levi Wallace with a pick, and the Broncos are going to take over here up near the 40. They go play action here on first down. Open man is the tight end, Troutman. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. Looking to throw on second down. Knicks. He'll find Reynolds over the middle. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Targets and finds Reynolds once more. And he's got this down to the 35. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. They try the left side here with Williams. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. So statistically, both of these offenses having a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that brings up third and a full ten yards. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Third down and 10. Looking to throw. Nix. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 16. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. And that'll be a free five yards for the offense. Just like a tennis match, that's just an unforced error. Stay alert. Don't jump early and give them free yardage. Following the penalty, it's Williams. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Operating from the gun. 
Nix. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. Touchdown, Broncos. Javante Williams from 10 yards out. And the Broncos are able to extend their lead. Well, partner, he has carried them in this ball game, throwing the football. All four touchdowns through the air, and that's really helped them get this nice lead. And I know it's a team game, but right now, he is truly the focal point. Every touchdown his team has so far has been the result of his arm. How about him throwing it downfield, creating big plays? I don't know how you slow him down unless you can make him uncomfortable in the pocket. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. The Bengals drive about to get going. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD, and if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. It's tipped, but it doesn't matter. He still catches it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. It'll go as a gain of 25 on a play that started back at the 25. But when we see the ball tipped in the air, sometimes we get a little roll change, don't we? Because when it's in the air, sometimes the defensive back becomes the receiver. And in this case, the receiver looked like a defensive back, but ended up a receiver. He, he caught it as a receiver. <laughs> hey, it worked out. Worked out really well for them. But I'm telling you, the defensive guys. Frustrated. Oh, frustrated. <laughs> They're going to catch it in film. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. So second and ten, third quarter. Thanks for tagging along with us here from the Queen City of Cincinnati. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. From midfield now, Burrow. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off, but a nice game there for a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. It certainly looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Burrow. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. At this point in the game, and the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps, and soon. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. And they go play action now, Burrow. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Three quarters in the books. 
You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Now it's Burrow. Open man is Higgins, and he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Bengals are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, C.D., and, well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense and he made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him and he delivered and made it a three-score game. It's one play at a time, baby. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football, you're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge onto the field, fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to crush any hope left on the opposing sideline, and they want to do it with some gusto, too. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. On third down, here's Williams. And it's not going to be enough here. A gain of four, about two feet short of the marker, fourth down. When a good play is made on defense, oftentimes leverage is the key to everything. Defensive line not getting turned, all the other guys making sure they're in the right spot. And on that play, they were able to stop them short of a first down. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. On second down, here's Burrow. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. The offense on third down, they've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Burrow looking to pass. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. 
Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game. And that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them, holding them under 200 today. Here we go. It's Burrow on fourth down. And that's going to be incomplete. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. 41 yards rushing for him now to this point. Good gain there on first down. It keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. He ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And the Broncos are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. this on first and goal and he's maybe going to get this back to the four but that's about all no gain on the play that time and it sets up second and goal defensively they had that one pretty well figured out yeah one of the things about this play it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off off the bootleg Nix and this is incomplete to give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, but a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. They'll look to throw on third and goal. Ah, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Now Lutz for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by Lutz is good. So after four touchdowns in the game for this offense, this time they're forced into taking the three. But you did mention four touchdowns, right? So four out of five, not too bad. I think that's a pretty good record for them. Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. The Bengals drive about to get going. And last time went for it on fourth, didn't get it. We'll see if they can pick themselves up off the mat and do better this go around. Sometimes I have this vision of coaches writing notes to themselves before a game. And sometimes that note says, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Maybe that's what we saw in the last possession. Yeah, they were very aggressive. This time, will it result in points? We'll find out. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And his throw is incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Burrow. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they work this well up field across the 45. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack, just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. And he's going to go down again. John Franklin Myers, the one in there to drop him. Well, partner, you and I will be headed to the airport, but after this game, when it's interview time, someone's going to ask this quarterback what hurt worse, the interceptions or the sacks. His whole day, it's been rough. Barring a miraculous comeback, this offense isn't going to win this game, but he's probably going to say what hurt most is the loss. Now Burrow loses the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. Look at the big man rumble. And this is going to be brought back for a Denver touchdown. Lutz good on the extra point, and that'll increase their lead to 28. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers you would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And that nearly trouble, but it's incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it, and it'll be second down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Got him in. It's Brown five yards now it's third and five you got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff right and this is why you work on your tackling tackle them after the catch inbounds keep the clock running just go ahead and bleed the game out that way here is third and five and burrow gonna throw again that is caught, and he is going to have a Bengals first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. 
So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Looking deep here for Chase. And that is caught. Well, they're going to see this one to the end. They get a score, but pretty much an exercise in futility right now. Still down big. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that'll cut the lead back down to 21. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Williams going to get it again on second down. And yeah, not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And we talk so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long from Cincinnati.